Hello everyone and welcome back to tutorial 2 of MIE 100, the dynamics course at the University of Toronto. Today we're going to be solving problems on um, kinematics of particles, specifically plane curvilinear motion. Um, if you have any questions throughout any of the video, please leave your comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. So starting with our first problem, we've got an overhead view of part of a pinball game as shown. If the plunger imparts an initial speed of 3 meters per second to the ball at time t is 0, determine the acceleration of the ball at time 0.08 seconds and 0.2 seconds. Noting that at point f, the speed of the pinball has decreased by 10%, and uh, from the initial value, and this decrease may be assumed to, to occur uniformly over the total distance traveled by the pinball. We've also got our values r and theta. So starting with this question, we know that our initial velocity at a is 3 meters per second, and that's at t equals to 0 seconds. We also know that r is 150 millimeters or 0 0.15 meters. Our theta is 60 degrees and our vf, the velocity at, um, at point f, is 10% less than va. So, so what does that mean? That's 0 0.9 multiplied by VA. And for part A, he's asking us for the acceleration at t is equal to 0 0.08 seconds. All right, so first of all, let's try to find what VF is equal to. So that's equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by the initial velocity, which is 3. And that will give us 2.7 meters per second. All right. So if we remember what we uh, took from last week, our projectile motion equations for constant acceleration are as follows. We've got v is equal to v naught plus a t. We've got v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a and then the difference in distance. We've also got s is equal to s naught plus v naught times t plus half a t squared. That's, these are our equations for constant acceleration. Now for curvilinear motion This is when basically the motion is not linear, it's at a curve. Our equations differ. Our acceleration becomes split into two parts. A normal acceleration and a tangential acceleration. Now what's our normal acceleration going to be equal to? That's v squared over r, or v times theta dot. And our tangential acceleration is equal to uh, v dot, or v squared minus v naught squared over 2s minus s naught. Now that we have all our equations, we can start solving our problem. But first of all, it's useful to know what the total distance is from A to F. So, the distance from A to F is basically equal to 3 R's plus this portion over here plus this portion over here. So, 3 R plus... 
portion B to C is equal to pi R over 2. And portion D to E is equal to theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi R. This is at a right angle. This is why this is more straightforward. It's just uh, pi r over 2. But because this is at an angle, so it becomes a theta over 360 multiplied by the circumference. So if we plug in our uh, r value, and our theta value we get the total distance SAF S from A to F equal to 0 0.843 meters alright so now that we've got this distance over here we can plug it into our equations here. So, if you want to know the velocity at f, no, sorry, we do know the velocity at f, but we want to know the tangential acceleration. So, we're going to use this equation and plug in our known values. to get the value for the tangential acceleration, which is minus 1.014 meters per second squared. Um, by the way, this, e this acceleration, the tangential one, is always constant. So the normal acceleration is going to change, but the tangential one is always the same. So now that we've got the tangential acceleration, now we can start with um, actually finding the, uh, the magnitude of acceleration. So to do that, we need to find, um, we basically need to find where our ball lies. So we only know, we only know the time it took. So we know that at 0 0.08, it's somewhere along this path, but we don't know where exactly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to know exactly where it is. And we're going to use our uh, projectile motion equations to do that. So V1 is equal to VA plus AT multiplied by T1 to get our velocity. Um, at t is equal to 0 0.08 seconds. So we've got 3 plus minus 1.014 multiplied by 0 0.08. And this is our velocity, 2.92 meters per second. This is our velocity at t1. And then we're going to plug that into our equation to find um, basically the distance. So s1 is equal to SA plus VAT1 plus half AT1 squared. And then we now find now we know the, the total distance is equal to zero point two three six meters at t1. Now that we know the distance, we can for sure know that it's definitely um, more, than our di more than our distance SAB, which is equal to r. r is 0 0.15, right? So this is definitely more than that. But where is it exactly on the curve? The way to do that is by first pinpointing the total distance from A to C. 
So from A to C, we know that it's equal to 0 0.15 plus Z, uh, pi times 0 0.15 over 2. This is the quarter of the circumference. And we get 0 0.386. So now that we know that the distance from AC is actually bigger than S1, we know that the ball is somewhere within the first curve. Now that we know that, that's very important because now that we know that, we can we can now try to tell where it is exactly within that curve, like at what angle it is within that curve, right? So we can tell what this is equal to. So S1 is going to be equal to R plus... 2 pi r phi over 360 and we already know the distance s1 and we know what our r is so now finding phi is easy our phi is equal to 32.8 degrees this is where the ball is inside that curve Now we're just going to find our normal acceleration, which is equal to v1 squared over r. And that gives us 56.8 meters per second squared. And just to visualize what, where our ball is exactly, We've got this A to B track, and then our curve B to C. And our ball is somewhere over here. Our positive Y and X coordinates. We know for a fact that the tangential acceleration is decreasing because the um, VF was less than VA. So the tangential acceleration is decreasing towards in the same line as the curve. So that's our tangential acceleration. And the normal acceleration is going to be um, perpendicular to that. So it's going to be pointing towards the center of rotation. The normal acceleration always points towards the center of rotation. And um, yeah. So now that we know where AN and AT are pointing, we can now start finding the magnitude of the total acceleration. Which is equal to minus the normal acceleration, sine phi, minus the tangential acceleration, cosine phi, in the i direction so this is our i direction and we know that uh, the normal acceleration is negative in the in the i direction and the t the the tangential acceleration is always negative is also negative in the x direction and where's our phi this is our phi And in the j direction, it's going to be the normal acceleration, cosine phi, minus the tangential acceleration, sine phi, because the tangential acceleration is in the negative y, and then the normal acceleration is in the positive y direction. 
and then once we plug in our known values We get a final answer of A1 is equal to minus 31.6 in the I direction and 46.9 in the J direction, meters per second squared. Now going back to our question for part B, it's at time is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. So part B at time is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. What is the acceleration? We're going to do exactly the same steps again. So first of all, we're going to try to find the velocity at part 2. So V2 is equal to VA plus tangential acceleration multiplied by the time squared. You plug in our known values. Remember, the tangential acceleration is always constant. To get V2 is equal to 2.8 meters per second. Now that we've got the velocity at uh, T2, we're going to try to find the distance it traveled. So S2 is equal to SA plus VA T2 plus half A multiplied by T2 squared. And now we plug in our known values. To get the value for S2, which is 0 0.58 meters. We're going to do the same thing where we try to find where our ball lies within that curve. So first of all, we're going to try to analyze uh, from SA to SE, and then we're going to try to find from SA to SD to make sure that it's um, within D and E or within D and C. We're still going to try to find out. So the distance from A to E is equal to two R's plus pi r over 2 plus 1 sixth of 2 pi r and that's going to give us 0 0.693 meters so that is definitely bigger than s2 so now let's check the distance from a to d And that's going to be 2r plus pi r over 2, which gives us 0 0.536 meters. And that is less than S2. So we know that AE, I mean S2, is between E and D, which means it's within the second curve. All right, so now that we know that, we can find the um, where it is within that curve. So the um, so the angle phi two where the ball lands. So that's s two is equal to two r plus pi r over 2 
plus 5, 2 over 360, multiplied by the circumference 2 pi r. And because we already know the distance is 0 0.58, and we know the value for r, We can, find, we can easily find our phi 2, which is equal to 16.95 degrees. And now we're going to calculate the normal uh, acceleration, which is v squared, v2 squared over r. And that's going to give us 52.3 meters per second squared. And just to visualize where our ball is, oops, let me try to fix that. So Our ball is somewhere over here, and the normal acceleration is pointing towards the uh, center of rotation. And because the ball is decelerating, so the tangential accelerating, the tangential acceleration is going to be pointing downwards. And we want to find out what this angle over here is, phi two. So A2 is going to be equal to the normal acceleration, cosine phi minus tangential acceleration, sine phi in the I direction. And then in the J direction, it's going to be equal to minus A N sine phi minus A T cosine phi. And once we plug in our known values, we get a final answer of A2 is equal to 49.7i minus 15.5j meters per second squared. Now for question two, we've got a pulley system with each of the cables at A and B given a velocity of 2 meters per second in the direction of the arrow, determine the upward velocity of the load M. So that's a fairly simple one. We know that VA is equal to 2 meters per second, and VB is also equal to 2 meters per second. And we want to find basically what Vm is. So this is what Vm is. So first of all, let's try to annotate this diagram. This is x1. This is x2. This is VB and this is VA. And let's say that this distance over here is Y1. And this distance over here 
is y2. So therefore, distance from here to here is going to be equal to y2 minus y1. And the coordinate system is where this is where y is positive. So now that we've annotated this diagram to make it a bit clearer, the first thing we're going to talk about is the constrained motion equations. Constrained motion of connected particles. These are basically pulley equations that we have to understand. They're not like um, equations that you have to remember, but kind of like a concept that you have to understand. We know that this uh, cable over here, x2, plus this cable over here, y2, plus this co cable over here, this is all just one cable. This is all just one cable, and therefore it's equal to a constant. This cable over here as well, y1, y1 again, and x1, this is all one cable as well. It's all one cable. So therefore, that cable has a fixed length equal to c. It's a constant. Let me write that down for, for you to understand it better. So we know that x1, length of the cable over here, plus y1, the length of the cable over here, plus y1 again, length of the cable over here, is all equal to a constant c. This is the length of the cable. x1 and y1 are all portions of the length of the cable. Therefore, if we derive them, we get x dot 1 plus 2y dot 1 is equal to 0. Because when you derive a constant, you just get 0. So, our first equation, y dot 1, is equal to minus x dot 1 over 2. This is our first equation. And for our second equation, we're going to analyze the second cable over here, which is x2 plus y2 plus this portion over here, which is y2 minus y1 is all equal to the length of the cable C. Let's call this C2. Let's call this C1. So when we derive them, we get x dot 2 plus 2y dot 2 minus y dot 1 is equal to 0. And this is our second equation. And when we substitute in our 1 into equation 2, we get x dot 2 plus 2y dot 2 plus x dot 1 over 2 is equal to 0. By the way, this just means VB, and this one is VA. So when we plug in our known values, we get 2 plus 2y dot 2 plus 2 over 2 is equal to 0, which gives us a value for y dot 2 is minus 1.5 meters per second. y dot 2 is basically just equal to vm, our value over here, which means that we just found our answer, but this is for the direction going downwards because we got y is positive when it's going downwards. So if you want to know the upwards velocity, it's going to be equal to 1.5 meters per second. Now for part three, 
We've got a baseball player releasing a ball with an initial velocity of 35 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees with a horizontal line. And if t is equal to zero is the time of release of the ball, determine the rate of change of the speed at t is equal to one second. Basically, the rate of change of speed is basically at, or the tangential acceleration, or it occurs along the same line. Use geometry to find the direction along a path. So we know that the initial speed is 35 meters per second at t is equal to zero. The theta is 35 degrees. And we want to know the rate, rate of change of speed, so v dot, or actually the tangential acceleration, at t1 is equal to 1 second. So now that we know that the tangential acceleration is the same as v dot, we're going to try to find the horizontal and vertical velocities. So the horizontal velocity is equal to x is equal to x naught plus v naught multiplied by t. So using geometry, this is just basically v naught cosine theta multiplied by t. And then x dot, which is the velocity in the x direction, is equal to v naught cosine theta. And then when we plug in our known values, we get Vx is equal to 28.67 meters per second. We're going to do the same thing with our vertical, with our vertical coordinate system. So we've got y is equal to y naught plus v naught y t plus half a y t squared, this is for the gravity. We don't have gravity in the horizontal direction, but we do in the vertical. So that will basically be equal to v naught sine theta t minus half g t squared. When we derive that, we get v naught sine theta minus gt is equal to the velocity in the y direction. And when we plug in our known values, we get vy is equal to 10.27 meters per second. So now let's draw a free body diagram for our ball. Or not, it's not a free body diagram but just to understand it better, what it looks like. We've got our Vy pointing this way and our Vx pointing that way, which means that our total velocity is pointing somewhere here with an angle phi. It's decelerating since the person is going to throw it with a projectile motion that decreases. So AT is in the opposite direction because it's decelerating. And the normal acceleration is going to be perpendicular to the tangential. So now that we know that, we want to find out what this angle is equal to. So phi is going to be equal to arctan of Vy over Vx.
which is 10.27 over 28.67, giving us phi is equal to 19.7 degrees. And now to find the acceleration, so v dot x, The derivative of vx is going to be equal to 0 because it's just a constant. So ax is 0. And ay is going to be the derivative of vy, which is equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared. This is just minus g. And at, the tangential acceleration, we know is equal to v dot. And since we don't have a vx, it's just going to be equal to minus 9.81 sine 19.7. Because if we look at the ball, we have our vy our vx, our v1, our tangential acceleration, and our normal acceleration. Our ay is pointing downwards, and since we have our phi, we know that this angle over here is also phi, so it's going to be sine 19.7, and this gives us a final answer of at is equal to minus 3.31 meters per second squared. And finally, for our final problem, we've got a point mass located at 10 and 5 meters with respect to a given set of rectangular axes. And some of, and some of the information about its motion is displayed here. We've, we want to find the speed of the particle, the velocity of the particle expressed in normal and tangential coordinates, the tangential acceleration, the radius of curvature, and a sketch of the direction uh, of, the, of the velocity in the normal uh, in the ve of the velocity in the normal direction. So we're just going to write down what we know about this problem. We know that x dot is minus 2 meters per second, y dot is equal to 2 meters per second, this is the velocity. And x double dot is minus 2 meters per second squared, y double dot is 1 meters per second squared, and this is the acceleration. And we want to find the speed. The speed is basically, the speed is a magnitude. But before we start going into these questions, let's first talk about the normal and tangential coordinates. So what's the normal and tangential coordinates? I'm going to draw a diagram to hopefully make this a bit clearer. If we've got a point A over here and a point A dash over here, this is a very slight curvature. The, the angle between A and A dash, we'll call it beta. And the distance from A to A dash, let's call it S. The velocity at, part, at point A is going to be equal to V, and the unit vector, the tangential, is going to be noted this way. 
We're going to do the same thing with a dash, so that's v dash, and the unit vector and the tangential is pointing in the same exact direction. Now, now that we know where the tangential unit vector is pointing, we know that the normal unit vector has to be perpendicular, so it's going to be pointing this way. Tangential to, uh, I mean, sorry, perpendicular to the tangential unit vector. So this one is always in the same direction as V. And the normal is perpendicular to the tangential and it always points towards to the center of rotation or the center of curvature. Let's call it center of curvature, actually. So the normal unit vector always points towards the center of curvature. The distance from the center of curvature to A or A dash is called uh, rho or the uh, radius of curvature. And as we know, un and ut are unit vectors. So now that we know that, let's write down some few equations. So we know that ds is equal to rho multiplied by d beta, and s is equal to theta r, theta is in radians. We also know that the velocity is equal to s dot, or rho d beta over dt. There's a few other equations worth noting. And here is the important equation. Our normal acceleration is going to be this part, v squared over rho. And our tangential acceleration is going to be this part, which is v dot. Now, let's draw a diagram of what's happening in this question. You've got a point at x equals to 10 and at y equals to 5. It has an x velocity going this way and a y velocity going this way, so it's in the negative x direction. Therefore, the velocity will be somewhere over here. The unit vector, the tangential unit vector, is going to be in the same direction. And the normal unit vector is going to be perpendicular to that, so it's going to be somewhere over here. Now, going back to the question part i, we want to find out what the speed of the particle is. which is basically a magnitude. The magnitude of the speed is just going to be equal to x dot squared plus y dot squared, all under the square root. And since we already know those, we're going to get speed is equal to 
2.83 meters per second. Now for part two of the question, they're asking us for the velocity in normal and tangential coordinates. So the speed is different from the velocity where the velocity is a unit vector and the speed is a magnitude, a scalar. So that's where the difference is. So the vector v is going to be equal to v in the tangential unit vector. That's going to be equal to, sorry, the answer is going to be equal to the velocity is 2.83 and then we're going to write our unit vector T. As shown here, the tangential unit vector is in the same direction as the velocity, and there is no normal unit vector because it's perpendicular to the velocity. I hope that makes sense. For part three of the question, we want to find out the tangential acceleration. And as we know from the previous equation, AT is equal to V dot. Now, let's try to visualize what the point looks like. We know that the velocity is pointing somewhere here. And we also know that the acceleration is also pointing somewhere here because the x double dot is negative while the y double dot is positive. So we've got two angles over here. We've got the angle uh, uh, of the velocity from the horizontal, let's call it alpha. And we've got the angle for the acceleration from the horizontal, let's call it beta. This is our AT. This is our A normal. If we just focus on the velocities, to try to find the alpha angle. We've got alpha is equal to arctan y dot over x dot, which gives us 45 degrees. If we do the same thing with our acceleration to find beta, we get beta is equal to arctan y double dot over x double dot, which gives us 26.6 degrees. So therefore, to find the tangential acceleration, we need to find the acceleration ax squared plus ay squared magnitude, and then We want to find the angle that's in between the acceleration and velocity. And since we know alpha and beta, it's just going to be equal to alpha minus beta. So once we found the acceleration, it's going to be cosine alpha minus beta to find the tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration is going to be 2 squared plus 1 squared under the square root, cosine 45 minus 26.6. And that gives us a final answer of AT is equal to 2.12 meters per second squared. 
Now for part four of the question, it's asking us for the radius of curvature, rho, and from our normal uh, normal acceleration equation, we know that a n is equal to v squared over rho. And to find a n, we just need to find the um, uh, the magnitude of a n, which is going to be equal to a sine alpha minus beta. Sorry about that. So that's going to be 2 squared plus 1 squared sine 45 minus 26.6. And that's going to give us the value for the normal acceleration is equal to 0 0.71 meters per second squared. And then we're going to plug that into our equation over here. So that's 0 0.71 is equal to 2.83 squared over rho. That's going to give us a final answer of rho is equal to 11.35 meters. And now for part five and the final part of our question, we want to sketch the unit vector n, I think. Yes, the normal unit vector. Um, we'll start with our coordinate system, so y and x. We've got our velocity pointing this way, which means our uh, tangential unit vector is pointing that way. And we know that the tangential coordinates are always perpendicular to the normal coordinates, so our normal unit vector is going to be pointing this way. And from part 3, we know that the angle of velocity, the, the angle with the horizontal line is equal to alpha, or... 45 degrees, which means that this angle is also going to be equal to 45 degrees. Um, I hope this question made sense. And yes, this is basically the final answer. That was the end of our tutorial. Thank you so much for listening to the video. Um, if you have any questions about the tutorial problems, feel free to email me at this email address or leave a comment in the comment section. And see you next week.